Good morning and welcome to Thetford. And I'm here with my friend Alice to do a little walk around the town to check out the lovely Nunnery Lakes Nature Reserve and numerous historic sites, of which one is just behind me. And that is the 11th century nunnery of St. George. And it's actually at the site of the British Trust for Ornithology. And this is their nature reserve, their one and only nature reserve. And I'm now crossing the river into the reserve itself. Um, the plan is to go and visit, as I say, lots of historic sites. I've got the castle, the Iron Age fort, a couple of priories and ruined churches. Be really, really interesting. And also to see what sort of nature there is about today on this glorious spring morning. So this is the stunning little nature reserve called Nunnery Lakes and as I said before it is owned and managed by the British Trust for Ornithology and it's actually their only nature reserve in the country. There is a hide just at the far end with a few permissive paths round and me and Alice were so lucky to, to head over to the uh, Kingfisher viewing point on the other side of this lake and there were two juvenile I think Kingfishers just fishing and it was just so lovely to see them. We've seen um, tufted ducks and there's Canada geese. Um, quite a lot of wildlife about. Um, Long-tailed tits, robins. Yeah, it's just been absolutely lovely to have a little visit here. It's been quite a few years since I was last here. Oops. And it looks like they're creating another little wetland bit on the other side of the path, which will be really good for birds like snipe and uh, other waders. So I'm going to head round this side of the reserve now and then over towards the impressive Castle Earthworks. <laughs> So we've just entered Castle Park and there's this enormous mott here, which I think might be the second tallest mott in the country. I'm not quite sure on that, but I know it is one of the tallest. It's about 25 meters from the base to the top. And there's a new set of steps leading all the way up. And it actually is built here because it incorporates these massive earthworks all along this side. 
and these date to 500 BC. So about 1,500 years before the castle. This castle was built around 1070 and apparently at the top there used to be a wooden tower. I couldn't find any information regarding a stone tower which is more common now with the, in terms of remains and stuff but uh, yeah there used to be a wooden tower on the top which would have allowed people to see any invading army or protect themselves as well. Look at the size of this enormous earthwork. So we just got to the top of the mot and we counted 90 steps and it was steep <laughs> but it is so so high and you can really see the impressive iron age earthworks there's multiple banks and ditches that head out over towards the rest of the park over that way i imagine they either went all the way around in a big circle or they used the river as a natural barrier on one side and it's clearly a very important strategic point which is why they built the castle here and why not use these enormous earthworks to defend the castle as well it just makes perfect sense and here is a wonderful view over the entire town and where I am here around the castle around nuns bridges is actually all the origin of the Saxon town that built up around here before it became a religious hotspot because there are so many religious buildings here in Thetford numerous priories there were friaries I think there was even a cathedral just over near a friary in the town center and there's the enormous St Mary's Priory which I'm going to go and look at very shortly sadly all that remains is just a few ruins but it makes a nice little historic walk around the town. just arrived here at the amazing ruins of St Mary's Priory in Thetford and this is one of the most impressive Priory ruins that I have ever been to and it's free to go in which is really amazing. It's in the care of English heritage and it dates back to the 12th century and sadly like all other Priories and monastic buildings it was demolished or largely demolished in 1540 on order of King Henry VIII, the most famous thing, the dissolution of the monasteries there. But Look at this absolutely amazing cloister range here. You can just imagine it, like if you visited cathedrals in the past, they all have cloisters. You can just imagine a similar thing right here. I'm inside the church at the moment and you've got parts of the original arch you can see up there. Some areas of original faced stone, which is just lovely. And then I think this is like an abbot's quarters or something like that up here and um, I know there's some really fancy Norman stonework there so this is just really nice to have a leisurely look around and take in the atmosphere of this lovely place.
So this impressive building is the prior's lodgings and the two arches in the middle are actually two very fine examples of 12th century archways which is actually the date of the priory but after the dissolution of the monasteries in 1540 this building was actually used as a house for another 200 years which is why you've got all of these different phases as it was modified and altered over those centuries but by about 1820 I think the building was actually roofless and derelict and it is in the condition where you can see it today. taking just a little detour off the trail. St Mary's Priory is just a few hundred metres over there and we follow the road to an area of woodland because there's another castle here and this is a medieval ring work that dates to the 12th century and I've got a lovely bank and ditch that runs right alongside me. You can see there's a big ditch here and a bank on this side. It's not as well preserved as the other castle and there seems to be some kind of motte or something here which again would have probably supported some kind of wooden tower. Now there is very little information, there's no information boards around this site and um, I can't find much in terms of excavation information or anything like that but um, I know it was obviously built after the larger castle over there but I can't find out a reason why it was built after that castle. The only other site that I've ever been to that has two castles in such close proximity is in Corfe and one of those was built to siege the other castle. So whether or not that's the idea of this place or it was just another castle to defend the area, I don't really know. back to Nuns Bridges I had to stop here at this lovely priory ruin. This is the priory of the Holy Sepulchre or Sepulchre, I have no idea how to pronounce it. It is S-E-P-U-L-C-H-R-E, -E. no idea how to pronounce that. But what's really amazing about this scheduled ancient monument is that it's the only priory dedicated to the Holy Sepulchre that is surviving in England. It is very small, this is the nave of the church and unfortunately it's closed at the moment for essential maintenance. picked up Spring Walk which is a little path that is sandwiched between the River Thet and the Little Ooze and just before that we managed to see the ruins of a friary um, just at Thetford Grammar School. Behind there is actually the site I believe of Thetford Cathedral as well or a minster because it does say Minstergate just on one of the signs nearby but we're following the Little Ooze now I think, I think this is the Little Ooze, uh, down to Nuns Bridges where we've parked the car and calling it a day.